everyone, welcome to the Image and Wire show. My name is Jake Fishman. I'm the host of the show and the editor of the Image and Wire. And we have a great episode for you all today. We have Mike Coulter and Jeffrey Bundy from United Imaging joining us. Um, they have both been involved in some of some really cool innovations that have come out of United Imaging in these last couple of years. And, and that's what we're going to be talking about today is, is innovation in medical imaging and how to do it right and how to, how to do it the right way for your customers. Uh, and I'm pumped on that. Mike, Jeffrey, welcome to the show. Thank you to be here. Thank you. It's good to have you here. Um, so maybe to start us off, you can give us a quick intro to yourselves and, and what you do over at United Imaging, and then, then we'll jump into the, the main topic. Sure, sounds good. I'm Jeffrey Bundy, CEO of United Imaging in North America, responsible for sales and service across the U.S., I started in medical imaging in the 90s, basically in innovation in R&D and started working on a number of innovative areas in cardiac MRI and, and been in medical imaging since then and excited to be a part of this company as we innovate as well. It's just that innovation is a little bit different than pulse sequence programming used to be in the 1990s. And I think that's what we're here to talk about today. And I'm Mike Coulter. I'm senior VP of market strategy and commercialization here at United Imaging. And uh, I come from a, a sitting on both sides of the desk. I came from being an MR tech and CT tech, marketing managing imaging centers all the way through director of operations before coming over and owning a, a, a business and then coming over to the vendor side and working from a frontline salesperson up through managing marketing and sales globally for a couple of the big vendors. So I'm um, excited to be here. And as Jeffrey says, yeah, it's, it's very, very much different here than it was at the other companies. And, and that's what makes it fun and exciting. Really happy to have you both here. Um, and maybe just to, I guess, get us all caught up. Could you help us understand, Jeffrey, we can start with you, the, the state of innovation in medical imaging overall? Yeah, I think there's, there's a lot of pressure on everybody in the marketplace to innovate and come out with new things and stay ahead. And, you know, that's core to who we are as a company is, you know, our vision is to be an innovator and be seen as a leading innovator around the world. Um, but a lot of the technological innovation that's happening or has happened for quite some time is incremental. And, you know, small changes, software releases, tweaks on systems um, has really been kind of the rule of the day for quite some time in innovation. And, you know, over the last couple of years, we broke that mold a little bit by bringing some things in that haven't been, haven't existed, like a 75 centimeter uh, 3T scanner, as well as our Explorer scanner, two meter PET CT, some things that are really benchmarking the industry and, and bringing new things in the industry. But, you know, the reality is, you know, people make decisions about technology, but there's a lot more in, in imaging industry that hasn't changed at all. And that's really the business side of things. Things have really been stagnant, same business practices, same way to sell systems, same way to negotiate systems, same ways to configure systems. And you know, that's what we're trying to break, disrupt and, and change in the industry is really as much the business side as is the technological side. Yeah, I think it's been uh, very well kind of documented how the business has been running for quite frankly, you know, the last several decades. And, um, and that's focused around the boxes. And I think there's so much more that can be done for the industry and for the, the, the market in looking at what happens outside the box, right? I mean, um, I, I will be very complimentary of, of most all of our competitors. Basically, all of our competitors have a system that, you know, treats patients well, right? We can argue about whether this one's better or that one's better. But, but you know, there's a lot of outside pressures around payers, you know, limited margins, um, you know, continued changes around staffing issues and things like that, that, that those boxes aren't necessarily addressing. And, um, you know, I think it's also uh, important to note that, you know, there's a lot of talk about access to medicine um, and talking about, you know, having access to an MR. And one thing that I know Jeffrey has talked about before and, and is, is keen on, and we all believe in is it's not just about access. It's about equal access. Um, and, you know, the fact that you have a MR available is not good enough. You should have the same standard of care everywhere that we're giving care, whether that's Manhattan, New York, or Manhattan, Kansas. And so um, I think that's a big thing that drives us as well. Mike, you were earlier talking about, um, I guess, your path towards United Imaging and, and the, 
the last three decades. Um, and now here you are at United Imaging. Can you help us understand um, United Imaging's approach to innovation? Yeah, I, I think, you know, uh, as we mentioned, I mean, we're, we're making those zero to one innovations of 75 centimeters and two meter field of view on PET. Um, those are technology, right? But, but taking it out of the box, as I was mentioning, um, and driving that equal health care to, to all is, is really what we're about. And that's in more of the business models, right? Everybody's having to do more with less. And, um, you know, we've done a lot of innovation on the business models. And, and I think it's really important to talk about, you know, what some of those things are. I mean, looking at um, things like what we call all-in configurations, meaning all of our systems are configured exactly the same, whether it's in Manhattan, New York, or Manhattan, Kansas. Um, you know, for the past, we've often played the, the checkers shell game of bringing things in and out. Um, you know, I often joke, it's like Christmas when you get a new system installed because nobody really knows what's in the box after it's gone back and forth uh, in all the negotiations. And, and um, you know, we got rid of all of that and, and said that, you know, that equal healthcare is truly equal. And, and so we configure every system. Now, the beauty of that is that we've found ways to, to make that profitable and to do that well. And that comes from a lot of other things, um, you know, that, that are how we do it. And, and, but, but that's a really big thing. We also have things like United Performance Guarantees where, you know, we're refunding people what they pay at any time that they're down. That's us standing behind our products. But we did realize as we did all in configurations, you know, that takes all the triaging of scheduling patients um, out of the way. And we, we really wanted our, our uh, customers to, to never say no to a patient again. There's no reason that their, their capital equipment should keep them from giving good health care, the standard of care. And so in doing so, um, we realized that, well, if you bought a system last year and you buy one next year, that we've come out with new innovations on those boxes. Mm -hmm. and, and how do we make sure that those are continue to be equal? And, and so what we did is we came out with software for life, right? So as long as that product is, is um, being built, um, we will continue to add all of the future upgrades to that. All the software that comes in the future, we will add at no cost to our, to our customers. And a lot of people say this is too good to be true, um, but it's, it's really what the market needs. And, you know, these things, you know, help us to make it equal to our patients, but also, you know, equal to, is there somebody who's got a better negotiating status than another hospital? Does somebody have, you know, um, you know, better negotiating skills? It takes all that out. It's all in there. And now we're, we're priced at a, at a very competitive piece, providing more value to the market than, than what anybody else is. And uh, people are really getting behind this and, and really seeing great uh, positivity out of it. Yeah, I would just add, you know, thanks, Mike. I mean, the reality is you know, we're heading up against some players that have been in the market for a very long time. They've established the rules in the market and set up the way things work. And, you know, for us to be successful, we have to change those rules. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to, to break things, as Mike says often, break things that need to be broken. And we're focused on, on customer pain points, I think. And that's one of the, the important things that we think about is what in a relationship between us and our customers, or even within a customer, certain people, certain roles in a customer, that we remove the pain points that they have to, to talk to each other, negotiate configurations with each other, for example, to determine the right pricing, to give up this feature or that feature. We're taking a lot of those things out. And when we look at our service relationship, how we price that, how we stand behind it, the local part storage that we put in place, you know, service engineers near every customer, even in a situation where we're very new to a market, we've been able to keep those commitments and, you know, break some things along the way. And, and we hope that as we look up, you know, through time, we're able to really change a lot about the way the business is run in our industry. With all of these innovations and, and um, I guess, changes in philosophy versus how things are done elsewhere or historically, how has that directly impacted United Imaging's products and, um, and operations, really? Well, I think, I think the big piece is that differentiating is how it's impacting our operations, to your point. I think that, um, you know, what we really see is it's driving down the cost of healthcare, which is the ultimate 
um, kind of goal, if you will, for should be for all of the manufacturers, um, getting that higher standard of care that is expected by all of our customers, but at a, at a reasonable price or price that can be um, replicated. And, you know, some of the things that we've had to do to do that is, you know, we brought manufacturing to the U.S., um, no other vendors have done that. We have uh, a huge showroom, about 100,000 100, square feet of R&D showroom and factory down in Houston, Texas. Um, a, you know, quite frankly, a, a showroom unlike the likes of anybody, any other company in the U.S. Um, we, we brought that and that helps us to bring down uh, manufacturing costs, actually. But also um, it's helped us with our supply chain. I mean, if you look at the current uh, environment right now with ongoing supply chain issues, um, it's something that, you know, we have from the beginning of the company four years ago had a standard answer of, you know, when can you get a system in 90 to 120 days? That has not changed throughout the entire COVID and supply chain problems, whether it was the port issues in Long Beach, whether it was, um, you know, not being able to get chips, whether it was, you know, any of these, uh, these topics um, have not changed that. And, you know, we've, we still to this day can deliver, you know, a CT scanner in a couple of weeks if we need to. And, and that is, that's huge for the business, right? Um, there's a lot of customers who have an old system that the tube blows. They have no choice but to put a $100,000 tube in a system that's worth 20 because they can't let their patients not be scanned. And um, our, our manufacturing here has been a big thing with that. And then we've also found, um, you know, cost savings in those things. Um, that has come through, you know, with scalability and found a way to really do by, by really starting at what the pain points are of our customers and not just the patient, but the provider. Um, we've been able to figure out ways to do it that have also been very beneficial for us and the market. And so that's been a, a really, really fun thing to do, quite frankly. Yeah, I think Mikey said it very well. You know, things that are done right, done correctly for the industry actually benefit us and our customers, things that lower the cost position of ourselves and the way we operate can be passed on to customers and things that we make simpler between us actually makes things simpler behind the scenes. We don't need a team of people working on configurations and in, in supply chain because we ship the same thing all the time. And we, you know, therefore lowering costs. We don't need a team of people selling aftermarket software at very high prices because we're providing that as a part of our ongoing relationship. So there are a number of things that just make it's simpler for us and for our customers. Is there a certain type of innovation or a certain specific innovation that has resonated most with your customers? You know, I think really it's been, you know, those focuses on, on changing how their business practices are. I think there's a lot of reasons for that. There's a lot of very smart business people in healthcare, but many people in healthcare come from being clinicians and move their way up. They're not MBAs. They're not, you know, haven't run 14 different businesses and, and don't always know what to ask for. So I think doing those things um, has, has really benefited in keeping our costs low. I mean, Jeffrey hit on, on some great ones. I mean, you know, our CT portfolio that basically you can see behind me here, um, you know, uh, has, has about eight part numbers total. And any other competitor, you're talking hundreds to thousands of part numbers per CT alone. So what does that mean? That means you've got an army of people doing regulatory. You've got an army of people building the price books. You've got an army of people training the salespeople so they know what to put in the systems. We have none of that. It means you've got an, you know, a pile of inventory because you've got 50 systems with orders all waiting for construction. We don't have 50 different systems waiting for construction. We have three or four. And the next one that gets done with its construction, it goes out the factory. So we have, a, you know, we've been able to keep those things low and that's what's really, really resonated. I mean, when we came in, we were talking a lot about the bits and the bytes and, and things, and we still do that. But now people are really asking, how do you do this and how is it scalable? And it's, it's really starting from scratch because we, you know, we had nothing before. We don't have any old things to build on. There's no legacy that we have to stand on. Um, whether it's R&D legacy or process legacy, or just quite frankly, you know, quarter to quarter revenue legacy, um, we can start and do it right from the beginning. And, um, you know, we, we've, we often use an example that, um, you know, that the train system in Europe or Japan is very different than it is in the U.S. The U.S. is slow and kind of clunky. And you go see these bullet trains places, you're like, wow, how is this? Well, it's because those, those systems, those train systems in Europe and Japan were all you know, basically destroyed in wars and, and rebuilt. And when they rebuilt them, they started with a new flat, you know, piece of paper and said, what's good look like? 
And that's really what we're doing. And so those are the innovations that I think get the most most talk. And, and I have to catch myself sometimes because I, I do sometimes now overlook the technology that is just blowing people away with incredible image quality and, you know, blind readings against our competitors. And people are saying, you know, we didn't expect it, but you guys killed it. And, you know, we're buying your systems now. So it's, you know, we, there's nothing to, to, uh, to worry about there, but this other stuff is, is quite fun and really getting a lot of keys from the market and, and how we can keep the cost down and make it scalable. Because some people have literally openly said, sounds too good to be true. What happens when you guys grow up big? How will it be scalable? Well, these, these kind of benefits that we're getting with a factory here and, and reduced part numbers and all of those things actually gets better when we get to scale. And, um, and, and some of the other things that we're doing uh, get better when you get to scale. So um, it's all positive. Yeah, I think if I can digress a little bit on uh, technology, you know, we, we do have some innovative technology that adds to that. Mike mentioned that, you know, people get excited about that. AI is, a, is one of those big mm -hmm. areas where we have you know, AI post-processing like a lot of others, but reconstruction techniques based on AI. Our new CT system is chock full of AI capabilities that, that add to the workflow, thus lowering costs again for our customers. And I think, you know, in the end, things that make life easier for our customers, whether it's the AI package that makes positioning easier and more reproducible on a, a CT scanner or just the ease of doing business and picking a configuration and buying a piece of equipment and getting it installed, we're trying to make it easier for everybody to do what they do for a living. So how do you identify the specific things, the specific innovations that, that would be most valuable? To your customers? Yeah, I think there's a, a couple of things there. I think that, um, you know, we all are, are, are focused on the patient, right? I mean, every vendor says we're focused on the patient and, and we are as well. Um, but I think what, you know, what we really try to do is, is step back another layer, right? Our, our providers are 100% myopic focused on the patient. That's what they're trained to do. That's what they do. Um, trained better than any of us. Um, and so, you know, I, I generally look at it and say, how can I focus on making the provider successful, right? And, and making them do that. And, and so in doing so, we start with our equal health care for all, which is our mission as a company. And we, you know, go from there and ex execute on how can we make the provider successful in that. And so, like I said, that mantra that started very early on of, you know, never say no to a patient again, right? If you start with that, it will look very different in your development cycle or your, or your innovation cycle than it would if you say, what if we built a pet MR, right? Um, that's a very different kind of uh, approach. And I think that that really is what, what you know, has got there. And then from there, we look at figuring out, okay, how do we you know, evaluate, get that understanding and, and provide the highest standard of care and once we find that, we go for the uh, go-to-market uh, go approach um, that will be mutually beneficial for the success of both our, our providers and ourselves. And, you know, and if we're helping our providers be successful, then the customer's taken care of. And, and that's kind of, I think, really where we go. So it's a very different view in where you start and the questions you ask. If you say it's all about a patient, you can get kind of stuck into a technology for technology's sake. And, and that's what we want to get away from. By, by all means, we're, we have a slew of people uh, doing that kind of thing as well. But, but really um, looking at that at, at an even broader level and saying, who is the real focus here? Is I think a, a big benefit on my side. Yeah, I think when you're starting a company from scratch, built for the modern world, you can build it how you want it and focus it on what you wanted. And from the very beginning, we've been a mission-driven company for that equal health care for all. And I, you know, I live in the Midwest. I grew up in the Midwest. I've had family members who have needed imaging and needed health care. And I know for sure that they did not get access to the same kind of care that people in, in the bigger cities on the coast got. So I've lived on the cities on the coast and I've seen the differences. And so that, you know, having that passion for all of us to make health care better for everybody across the United States and innovating things that makes health care high-end academic level healthcare accessible to everybody across the United States is motivating. And I think that's, you know, kind of what's been behind the creativity that we have on our team. I think Jeffrey, I mean, you know, it just brings to mind that, um, you know, the first digital PET scanner that we sold 
here at United was in El Paso, Texas, an underserved community, um, which, uh, you know, normally would never get that, right? And so to see that, and that was actually enabled by a different kind of business model that we did with our customers. So again, it's looking for ways to make our customers successful, and that's bringing that care where it needs to be. Jeffrey, you were talking about, um, I guess, your your mission or, or vision for equal health care for all. And, and uh, we had a interview a couple of weeks ago um, about United Imaging's culture-led strategy and culture as a strategy. Curious if you have any recommendations for viewers on how they might be able to make innovation a core part of their own uh, team or organization strategy. Yeah, great question. Um, you know, like we talked about last time we talked, you know, people are everything. You know, winning the battle for talent, winning the battle for the right people is, you know, what we're about. I mean, we can't we can't build a business, grow a business, outpace our competitors without the right people. And I think, you know, that's first and foremost is looking for people in the right seats and in the right company. I mean, Mike is a, is a very creative, uh, breaking kind of person that that cha will change and has changed the industry. We'll continue to do that. And we have other people in the company that are the same way. And I think a, you know, a really key thing and something I really believe in, it's a big part of our culture here, is empowerment. You know, and, and freeing people up to be creative and to break things and to suggest to break things. A lot of the things that we've that we've done that maybe Mike has implemented or somebody else has implemented has actually come from an idea of somebody just saying, well, what about this or what about that? And I think, you know, in, a, in an environment where we have what we've created that says we want to provide equal health care, we want to break things in the industry, we want to break things in the industry that other people don't want broken. And, and if we have that mindset and we're constantly thinking about it and talking about the things that, that we're working on, you know, and continuing to, to bring those up and, and to discuss, do we have the right things? Are there new things? What have we learned that we can change? And we do have to constantly change. So I think it's a, you know, it's, it's being true to a mission, being committed to a mission and, and putting people in places and letting them do their job, creating, building a team that's that's better at stuff than you are. You know, I, I want to put people around me who are different than me and can do things better than I can in, in different areas. And I think as we do that, as we build a larger team and continue to do that, I think we'll continue to break stuff and continue to come up with new new ways to change the industry. Yeah, and I think, I think Jeffrey, you, you really hit on it, that it's bringing around people that, that complement you. Um, you know, bringing around people that that do something different than you. I mean, if, if anybody that knows us, Jeffrey and I are very different people, um, but we've worked together extremely well to come up with some things, as he said, that has changed the industry. And and it's it's that empowerment. I think it's putting a a person uh, in a in a and giving him the power. But but you you also need to to have spokespeople, if you will, um, that that are relentless on going after those things. And, and that's another thing that we've put in it. We we're constantly, as Jeffrey says, you know, trying to break the status quo, trying to break stuff. And, um, and, you know, Jeffrey gives me that, that freedom to try to do that and drive that um, as well as the entire company. But that starts all the way at interviewing, right? I mean, asking people, you know, during an interview, different questions. And, you know, quite frankly, some of our biggest differentiators came from interviews with people in the industry. Um, and, you know, and those ideas were within a couple of weeks implemented um, really through just, you know, a radical approach of implementation and speed innovation um, that has not, I've never seen in the industry, quite frankly, especially with the big players. And, and so, you know, giving that freedom to go and try and fail and, and go and try and succeed. And um, what we found is, uh, as Jeffrey alluded to earlier, the places where we've made some of the biggest disruptions have turned out to be the most beneficial for our bottom line and, and our business. And, um, and it just started with giving the right people the right power to, to do what they always wanted to do at other companies. And so um, that's been a lot of fun. Yeah, I would, I would just add, you know, we talk a lot about the, from the beginning, we built the, the company from the customer in and we built our offerings from the customer in. And sometimes We've just been bold enough to take a risk and say, this is the right thing for the marketplace. Let's find a way for it to be profitable, right? And I think as, as Mike relayed earlier, some of these things that have additional benefits in the supply chain and, and other pain points have gone away. Some of those things we found out along the way. You know, one of the great things is we're so vertically oriented that we have control over quality and cost across the globe. And when, when we release that and simplify that, 
some of those things that we did simply to make our relationship with our customers better has rolled into, you know, cost savings behind the scenes that maybe, you know, we like to think we were smart enough to anticipate, but we discovered along the way, to be honest. Right. I guess if you, if you put the customer first, uh, good things seem to come along after that. No doubt. Um, well, gentlemen, this has been, this has been a real treat, actually. It's a type of thing that I found myself curious about, but I don't get to hear about that often. And it's, um, it's really cool to to learn more um, that, you know, putting the customer first and making sure that you're addressing providers pain points so they can take better care of their patients and doing a good technology and doing it uh, in a simple and logical way seems to make a lot of sense to me. And it seems like it's proving to make a lot of sense for your customers. So, so great job. And thanks for sharing. Hey, thanks, thanks for having us on. Appreciate it. That's great. Thank to have you. On. Thanks for watching everyone.